For example, there are limits. Uh, on one hand, it is certainly possible to make it seem like a 3D image is just floating above a tabletop, provided that good uh, optics are inside of that tabletop. But there's some things that probably won't happen, at least not with today's physics. For example, the people in this scene can't really look through that image, unless there's some sort of display element where that picture of that planet is. Let's explain this. So the, the best explanation I've found for what's called a window violation was written by Mike Halley, who is uh, an excellent researcher of 3D displays. And what he said was really important, so I'll just read it out loud. Um, our current understanding of physics does not include a practical way of forcing photons to change direction in the absence of an optical medium. Thus, a fundamental and general statement can be made about all spatial displays, whatever its particular technology. A display medium or element must always lie along a line of sight between the viewer and all parts of a spatial image. Let's uh, review those words in terms of pictures. So here are three examples of uh, window violations. So on the left, these are all images looking down uh, at a scene, maybe in someone's living room. So on the left, a viewer is looking at an image of a boat behind a display. So the display is doing something to light to provide the impression there's an image behind the display. Or the image could be inside a whole display volume, as in a volumetric display. Or the display could even project an aerial image, a sort of an image that floats in front of the display. All these things are possible with today's technology. But uh, parts of the object will seem to fall off the edge or disappear if those parts of the image are not visible to both eyes. That is, you could see the person's right eye can't see the leftmost part of the boat because beyond it, there's no more display. So finally, let's look at a couple examples of snake oil. There are a few things that are advertised as maybe 3D, but are really 2D. For example, on the left, you see an image of the Earth, and that's projected by a 2D image source, like a monitor. And there's maybe a Fresnel lens, which is a big flat lens with a bunch of curved grooves in it. Um, that does create some sort of floating image, but that image is actually just two-dimensional. Likewise, you can buy uh, really good quote-unquote holograms, which are flat sheets of material with little microscopic patterns in it that act like a clear projection screen for stores. So there's just a 2D projector behind this, and it illuminates it with a, an image. But if you were to walk around it, you wouldn't be able to see around the singer. She would, you'd just see the same image regardless of where you were standing. And a final example of claims you need to be aware of is this. There are quite a few companies that sell a large box that you plug in a video source of some animation, and there's some optic on the outside that makes a floating image. Generally, these work, but it's not necessarily a 3D image. Usually, it's just a 2D image that floats or is visible from a few different points of view. There are many tricks to do it. Uh, one is called uh, Pepper's Ghost. There uh, are other methods as well. And the way that I personally use to see if a system really is 3D is to look at the spec sheet. And on the specification sheet, there should be a parameter called video input. And if it only requires one video input, like a single XGA video card, uh, video connector, then you really need to be careful. Um, you know, giving the vendor the benefit of the doubt, I guess it's possible that the system also contains really advanced software that extracts 3D data from a single 2D image and then somehow display it. But both of those steps are at the edge of today's technology, and it's really unlikely. Uh, it's great if all you want is a floating, eye-catching 2D image. But if you or your customer asks you to create something with walk-around 3D in which you can inspect the imagery from different sides, you really need to ask the manufacturer if that's possible. So uh, in the next class, we will be uh, talking about a variety of display technologies. So this was a quick uh, entry to kind of get your feet wet and your brain used to the ideas of 3D. And the next class, which is coming very soon, is a fairly deep survey of quite a few different display technologies that I hope you'll like a lot. Thank you for your time. Uh, congratulations for making it through class one. Feel free to email me uh, whenever you want about any of these topics. I'm at greg, G-R-E-G-G, -G, at opticsforhire.com, and that's one word, as you can see. 
And if you want to learn more, here's a few resources you can use. Uh, you can try Stereoscopic.org, which is the 3D technical conference. There are a few um, SPIE volumes of collected really good papers on 3D displays, as well as some books that have come out recently about a variety of 3D displays. Thank you very much.